NFL Today on CBS Sports is presented by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And welcome back to the NFL Today. Right now, the Dolphins and Patriots are getting set for their matchup. And as we approach kickoff, let's send you out live to Foxborough with our announcers, Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, and Jamie Erdahl. JB, thank you. Week two of the new season continues here in Foxborough with the Patriots hosting the Dolphins. Both teams started on the road last week. Jubilation for the Patriots in Arizona. Disappointment for the Dolphins at Seattle. Back to throw Tano. Deep downfield. He's got stills. He's got all oh, oh, the no. football. Wilson, a lofter. It's caught by Baldwin. Touchdown. Tannehill. Devoured. Jimmy Garoppolo. First career start. Hogan wide open. Goodbye. He yeah. hooked it left. He hooked it left. And they celebrate a thrilling win over the Cardinals. Certainly a tale of two cities. Hi, everybody. Welcome to New England. Greg Gumbel along with Trent Green. Jamie Erdahl will join us from the sidelines today. Certainly the week one story for the Patriots, Jimmy Garoppolo's debut at quarterback. What did you expect? How did he do? I thought he handled himself tremendous. When you think about the pressure you're under, a third-year pro, having to fill in for Tom Brady, he was decisive with his reads. He was quick with his feet. He made good decisions and was able to spread the football around. And when you factor all that in, his completion percentage was near 73%. He didn't have any interceptions. I thought he handled himself tremendously. Well, the best tight end in the league, Rob Gronkowski, missed the game at Arizona. He will not play today either. But for Garoppolo and the Patriots, Julian Edelman stepped up last week. Well, it's only more impressive when you think about not having Rob Gronkowski. And Julian Edelman just continues to perform at a high level. Over the last four seasons, he's fifth in the National Football League in the number of receptions with 265. That didn't change a week ago when he was targeted and received seven receptions from Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, meanwhile, for the Miami Dolphins, now new head coach Adam Gaze brings his Dolphins in, desperately needing a win to keep from falling two games back. And Ryan Tannehill needs to do something he hasn't done before, and that's win here in New England. And that's a difficult task when you consider this is his fifth year in the National Football League. He is the third highest yards thrown for after four seasons in the National Football League, only behind Peyton Manning and Dan Marino. But we're going to look at some of the things that he does well. Adam Gase, new head coach, new offensive coordinator, another new system for Ryan Tannehill. Here he's under pressure, seven guys coming after him. He stays calm, he stands in the pocket, and he fires it. The important thing about that throw, he protected his receiver. He didn't lead him into a big hit. Now, talk about a bright spot for the Dolphins last week at Seattle. Their defense clamped down on a very good Seattle football team. When you think about Vance Joseph, first-time defensive coordinator, having Indomitian Sue in the middle of that defense, the disruptive force for this defense is that front four, being able to get penetration, get in the backfield, and help out the secondary by the amount of pressure that you can put on the opposing quarterback. All right, it is time for the Home Depot tools for success for this week two of the NFL season. Well, for the Home Depot, we start off with Miami and Arian Foster coming over from Houston, still having a presence, not only running the football, but catching the ball out of the backfield 100 yards from scrimmage. And for New England, with no Rob Gronkowski, it's about that other tight end, Martellus Bennett, traded, made a trade to get him over from Chicago. Additionally, for the Patriots, Devin McCourty continues to lead that defense, led the team with nine tackles a week ago. And for the Dolphins, their weapons, they have Landry. Devontae Parker is back, Stills and Cameron. It's the home opener for the Patriots and quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo as the Pats look for a 2-0 start. But the Dolphins arrive hungry for the win that eluded them a week ago. We'll have starting lineups and the kickoff from Gillette Stadium coming your way after this message and a word from your local station. the home opener for the Patriots and Jimmy Garoppolo making his first home start of his career as he continues to fill in for Tom Brady. For Miami fifth year veteran Ryan Tannehill looks for his first career win at New England. Today's game is being broadcast in Spanish where available using the SAP button on your television.
back at Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. It is somewhat of an overcast day. It was raining a little earlier, but not now. Good news for the lady on the sidelines, Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Greg, thank you. You mentioned one of those key inactives already today. Rob Gronkowski didn't even hit the field this morning for warm-up. Still plagued with that hamstring. He's out along with Dante Hightower. He didn't warm up either. He's still plagued with that knee injury. Good news for the Dolphins, though. Devontae Parker, he will make his season debut for Miami. He got out here, had early work, made sure that hamstring was good to go. But Adam Gase has that full arsenal of wide receivers today. All right, Jamie, thank you. Speaking of Adam Gase, in his first year as the head man for the Miami Dolphins, offensive coordinator for two years in Denver and for one with the Chicago Bears, and on the flip side of the field, the familiar face and presence of Bill Belichick in his 16th season as the uh, 17th season as the head coach here in New England. Four Super Bowl championships, six conference championships, three divi 13 divisional titles. <laughs> he's done okay. We could we could spend the next hour listing all the accomplishments that he's had as a head coach here in New England. Miami Dolphins won the toss and they have deferred. Matthew Slater is the deep man, along with DJ Foster. And we are set to go in Foxborough. Miami 0 and 1, New England 1 and 0, and Andrew Franks will kick it away as far as he can through the end zone. It'll be a touchback. It'll come out to the 25-yard line, and onto the field comes number 10, Jimmy Garoppolo. Threw the ball 33 times at Arizona, completed 24 of them, had a touchdown and no picks. He was impressive about the way he spread the football around. He was decisive with his throws. He made quick decisions, didn't hang on to the ball. Arizona tried bringing pressure in a number of different ways, and it didn't bother him. He was able to stick to the game plan and execute it very well. You know, we talked to him yesterday. It appears nothing bothers him. It's hard to believe he's only in a third year, and this is second NFL start. Well, he's very steady, and that's one of the things Josh McDaniels talked to us about is just how steady he is. LeGarrett Blunt in the backfield along with Garoppolo and Garoppolo gonna throw right off the bat on the slant That's complete to Edelman and Edelman for a first down across the 35 to about the 37 or 38 yard line Excellent catch by Edelman, but Garoppolo under pressure the Dolphins bringing press Kiko Alonzo gets a free hit on Jimmy Garoppolo I have a feeling they're gonna be trying to get after him all day make him uncomfortable back there So first down right off the bat, and this time Blunt gets the handoff, finds a little hole on the left side, and breaks through and close to another first down at the 48-yard line. That New England offense gets left tackle Nate Solder back today. He missed the opener at Arizona Sunday night with a hamstring injury, and in the, the week one win over the Cardinals, Julian Edelman was Garoppolo's favorite target with seven catches for 66 yards. First down, New England. And this is Blunt again. And Koamisi in on the stop for the Dolphins. Defensive end Mario Williams in the concussion protocol all week. Dean good to go today. He's in the lineup. In the middle of the defense is Kiki Alonso acquired by a trade from the Philadelphia Eagles and Pro Bowl safety Rashad Jones registered a team high 12 tackles in that two point loss at Seattle. Lost a yard on that last play at second and 11. DJ Foster and James White in the backfield. And Garoppolo with a quick pass to Foster. Foster looking for running room and can't find much of it. Maybe gain two to the 49. Xavier Howard, the rookie cornerback out of Baylor, second round draft pick of the Dolphins coming up to make well, the stop. Well, Greg, you talked about all the all the people on the, the defensive side of the ball. Six new faces over there, whether it's through free agency. You talked about the trade for Kiko Alonso. Byron Maxwell was also part of that trade. Xavier Howard, the draft pick out of Baylor. So lots of new faces over there on defense. It's impressive the way they played last week against Seattle. Now they've got to back it up here today against New England. Third and nine. Garoppolo near side of the field has a man and it is Edelman out of bounds at the 40-yard line and that's enough for a first down. 
Well, you can't give that big a cushion on third and long. You got to have help over the top. It was a two deep look with underneath coverage and Maxwell just giving too big of a cushion, allowing that easy pitch and catch for the first down by Edelman. Garoppolo with the short flip to Martellus Bennett, the tight end, and Bennett down the sideline, inside the 15-yard line. Terrence Fide. Finally making the stop. You're gonna see Bennett come across in motion. He just goes out in the flat. Just a simple play fake to the left, get it out. You see the blocking out in front by the wide receivers, both Hogan and Edelman getting their defensive backs blocked and giving Bennett the room to get down the field. Yeah, wide receivers do block in this offense, don't they? You have to. Going straight ahead is Blunt. And Blunt to about the 12, maybe the 13 yard line. There are some receivers around the league that get away without blocking on run plays, but on this staff, they're not going to let you get on the field. You've got, you've got to do your part, whether it be a backside clear out for another receiver or a tight end, whether it be in the running game with the blocking, it's demanded from everybody. As you can see, Josh McDaniels calling in that next play. Boy, Edelman and Hogan both throwing good blocks out in front. Second and nine. Opening drive for the Patriots. Garoppolo running out of time, throws over the middle, complete inside the five to the end zone. Danny Amendola touchdown. Amendola is going to be coming from the right slot for Jimmy Garoppolo. He has Edelman lined up in the left slot, trying to get him up the seam. You see the eyes of Garoppolo st first starting to the left, coming back to the right, and then finding the crease on the inside. Perfect job by Amendola to read the eyes of Garoppolo and slide away from the coverage of Jenkins and get his way into the end zone. Trent Garoppolo was so Tom Brady-like. <laughs> Pressure coming from the outside, stepped up and waited and found his man. Well, we talked about last week the way he was able to handle that pressure from Arizona and once again stepping up in the pocket this week against Miami and finding his man. Steven Gostowski with the extra point attempt and it is good. 10.53 to play. The Patriots take the opening kickoff and march into the end zone for a 7-0 lead. Danny Amendola on the receiving end of the 12-yard touchdown pass. How impressive was Garoppolo in that opening drive? Five out of five for 64 yards and four of those five completions for 10 or more. Well, and that was the thing. He, he was making quick decisions, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. When he had to hang on to the football, he was able to use the footwork and slide in the pocket. That touchdown pass to Amendola was a perfect example of that, feeling the outside pressure, working through his progressions, and then ultimately being on the same page as Amendola, who worked his way open in the middle of the field. That's his second straight game that Garoppolo engineers an opening drive touchdown that one will sail through the end zone for the touchback in case you were wondering three of the four dolphins who took a knee at the opener last week did so again today kenny stills michael thomas and arian foster jelani jenkins did not and here's ryan Tannehill. sacked four times at seattle and uh, what we mentioned at the beginning of the broadcast a rough outing for him physically he took a big beating physically it's going to be important for that offensive line they are missing pouncy again today at center anthony steam starting at center they've got to find more more ways to give him time to throw Tannehill still with the ball penalty marker is thrown Tannehill completes it out across the 30 close to the 35 yard line that penalty marker pretty sure is going to be against new england <laughs> that's got to be a jonathan freeney i don't know if that uh, they call it a hold a clothesline, line whatever it was a grab a exactly. takedown he ripped jordan cameron to the ground holding defense number 55 it's a five yard penalty and an automatic first down craig rolstad is our referee today this is as obvious as they get watch as he comes out here and just reaches up and grabs the inside 
that, that was pretty easy. Maybe a little bit of a flop, but I, he, he pulled him pretty good. So, Jordan Cameron, you see how he flailed his arms up in there? He was straight out of the NBA. He got that <laughs> one called. So. But it was definitely a hold. Foster in the backfield behind Tannehill. on the day up front as Trent mentioned Mike Pouncey missing a second straight game with a hip injury first year man Anthony Steen starts for him and Arian Foster gave the Dolphins 100 total yards from scrimmage last week and included three catches out of the backfield for 62 yards I think he answered any question marks about that Achilles coming back off the injury and being able to perform the way he did last week have to have another equal performance today. Second and seven, Tannehill to throw. Over the middle and overthrows and complete. He was pretty well covered over the middle was Kenny Stills. New England's defense to 4-3 D. Number 95, Chris Long had one of New England's three quarterback sacks in last week's opener. Middle linebacker Dante Hightower has been a question mark all week with a bad knee. He will not go. Shane McClellan, the fifth-year linebacker out of Boise State, replaces him. And Devin McCourty, the leader in that secondary, number 32, nine tackles in the win in Arizona. Third and seven. Throwing and off the fingertips intended for the tight end, Jordan Cameron. Patriots like to cause confusion with the pass protection. They put five right at the line of scrimmage. You can see all the bodies right here. A couple will drop out. You'll see the two inside guys. They fake like they're going to rust, then they drop back into coverage. That's a good job by Jerron Harmon getting a hand in there and disrupting the pass. He disrupted anything. He disrupted the vision of Jordan Cameron trying to bring that in. Amendola deep for the punt. Takes a look. Decides he can run it back. From about his own 18 and drag down just shy of the 25-yard line by Neville Hewitt. Second-year linebacker out of Marshall with the special teams play. About nine and a half to play in the first quarter, and it's New England by seven. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Corona, who invites you to find your beach. And by Fiat. Back at Gillette Stadium, 9.32 to play. Here in the first quarter. And New England from its own 25. The play fake to Blunt. Garoppolo throws wide open over the middle. Is Chris Hogan and Hogan another big game for the Patriots out to about the 45. This is similar to the play that they ran on the first drive. Bennett will once again be the guy coming behind the line of scrimmage into the flat. Three Dolphins go after Bennett, leaving that second layer, that second window, where Hogan is able to make the catch. That's a lot of room to roam for New England receivers in the middle of that field. And that's a problem for the defense when three guys go after one, leaving a window for, uh, as I said, for Hogan to get in there. So they have to figure out, communicate that better. 19-yard pickup, and here's Edelman. Edelman across midfield into Miami into the field and that is close to another first down give him about nine on the play well two the, the scouting report from Trent's extensive book on Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> well two things he's, he's already shown the, the the footwork and definitive with his throws the last thing about ball security in the pocket it's because I had to find something negative to say about there's really nothing in the last performance against Arizona other than when the pocket collapsed the one time he wasn't able to hang on to the football and they forced the fumble so that's something he's gonna have to deal with that comes from experience understanding as the pocket collapses on second and one, LeGarrette Blount straight ahead and has the first down. He reaches the 45-yard line. There's Vance Joseph. Nothing but good things to say about him from around the league. 
Yeah, I had an opportunity to talk to him this week about this defense, and he, he realizes there's a bunch of new faces. He realizes this is his first opportunity. He was happy with the way they performed up in Seattle. He thought it would give him confidence, but as we talked about in the open, coaches hate moral victories. They want the win, and he's still hanging his hat on that last drive that, uh, that Seattle got to, to, to seal that victory. Garoppolo, seven out of seven throwing the football. Looking for number eight in a row. Over the middle, and he's got his man inside the 25-yard line. That is Chris Hogan at Piers. Hogan with another catch and another first down for New England. Garoppolo once again buying time. You're going to see Hogan. He's just working into the middle of the field, but keep your eye on Garoppolo as well. He does a good job with his feet. He keeps his eyes up the field. He's looking to Edelman to his right. But then he slides up in the pocket. There's no need to take off and run. So many inexperienced quarterbacks. And Garoppolo is an inexperienced quarterback. Only his second start. Want to take off and run. He just bought time with his feet and made an accurate throw. On first down, it's Blunt. Boy, it's very clear. Garoppolo picking the secondary apart. And he's also getting terrific time from that offensive line against a very good front four. And you're going to make your offensive lineman very happy if you just slide a little bit. That's what the line's trying to do. They're trying to push the defenders by you. And if you can just slide in the pocket by yourself time, keep your eyes upfield. And that's exactly what Jimmy Garoppolo has been able to do. James White in the backfield with Garoppolo on second and nine. Garoppolo time again over the middle, and there's the first incompletion of the day thrown by Jimmy Garoppolo, and Jelani Jenkins knocked it down. It was intended for White. Well, and if you think about the way they've been able to spread the football around, it, it, it's very... You know, you hate to say after this is only a second game, but Tom Brady, you know, spreading the football around, that's what this offense is about. And some of the criticism that Jimmy Garoppolo took in the preseason was he wasn't real definitive. He wasn't decisive with his decisions. And talking to, to Josh McDaniels and just the performance he had last week, he was very decisive, and he's shown that again today, getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Garoppolo looks left, goes back right over the middle end zone. Touchdown! Martellus Bennett. 20 yards. And the Patriots are on the board again. You know, this is another impressive decision and throw from Jimmy Garoppolo. He's going to have his eyes out to the left. He's going to be looking left. That draws or holds or freezes the safety back there. Abdul Kadus is looking at Garoppolo's eyes and allows Bennett to get up that crease up the inside edge of the numbers. New England had Edelman underneath and Malcolm Mitchell over the top to the left. That's where the throw was intended to go. But since that wasn't there, he was able to work to the backside and get up the seam. And once again, his offensive line giving him enough time. Kostowski for the extra point, and it is good. 6-22 to play in the first quarter. It has been all Patriots so far. A two-touchdown lead in their home opener. Martellus Bennett on the receiving end of the touchdown pass. I don't know if this Garoppolo kid is going to work out. He's <laughs> only 9 of 10 for two touchdowns. Jamie. Well, Greg, it's been working in the first two weeks. He told us in Arizona, such a hostile environment. He could barely hear himself call plays. But you know what? He credited Tom Brady and watching him work the last three seasons. He said, I thought I worked hard at Eastern Illinois. Man, Tom Brady puts in the work, and he looks good today. All right, Jamie, thank you. The kickoff goes through the end zone for the touchback, and it'll come out to the 25-yard line, and Miami Dolphins now turning once again to their quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, to get a little action in. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. And by Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. Welcome back to Foxborough. Arian Foster in the backfield for a Miami Dolphins team that desperately needs to put some kind of a drive together for no other reason than to give their defense a little bit of a rest. This is Foster's left side. And he appeared to have been down before that ball came out. He is. He is marked down at about the 30-yard line. It'll be a game of five. 
a reminder for you Thursday your weekend starts here these New England Patriots on this very field in just a couple of days will host the Houston Texans Thursday night football on CBS and NFL Network Houston just one and six all time against New England we were asking coach Belichick on a Thursday night does he start even prior to this game he said you have to you have to just especially with a short week and uh, Houston has a tough game today against Kansas City Tannehill to throw running out of time holding on to it looking for the first down and sliding forward it'll be about a half a yard shy it would appear from here to be a first down and that's one of the things about Ryan Tannehill, his athleticism. You have to remember he started off in college as a wide receiver, transitioned over to a quarterback as they're going to get a quick snap here to try and pick up the first down. And he didn't go. He lost yardage. Now, Adam Gay says a lot of times he likes to go for it on fourth down, but they're on the wrong side of uh, midfield for this one. Well, and they, they tried getting a, a quick snap and a, and a surprise against New England, but New England had three guys stacked up over the center and just nowhere for Ryan Tannehill to go. Amendola deep for the kick up coming from Matt Dar. Second year punter out of Tennessee. Amendola fair catch called for and made at about the 24 yard line. So once again, spotlight turns to number 10, Jimmy Garoppolo. Four and a half to play here in the first. You know, in the interest of fairness, you would think it's really, really not a nice thing to compare Jimmy Garoppolo to Tom Brady, but all in all, he's doing okay. He's doing a tremendous job. If you think about it, look at the, look at the yardage total numbers. Obviously, the draft pick, everyone's talking about when Tom was drafted, the number of touchdowns. But this is the big one right here, four-time Super Bowl champion. Week one, he was the only quarterback in the NFL to throw for 100 or more yards in the first quarter. He's done it again today, 138 yards, 136 yards throwing. By the way, Ryan Tannehill, zero yards through the air so far. the 30 to about the 33 yard line well it's not a lack of effort the Dolphins advanced Joseph are, are trying to change things up but this time playing soft coverage and they just clear everybody out Edelman comes up sits down at eight yards it's just pitch and catch they're gonna have to find ways to get pressure into Garoppolo's face but if you're going to do that then that, that leaves a lot of one-on-ones down the field so you've got to continue to try and mix things up Watch it. New England almost 10 yards of play. This is LeGarrette Blunt. And he has enough for the first down across the 35 to the 36 yard line. We talked about some of the injuries and things that have shuffled around for the New England Patriots. Obviously, it's Rob Gronkowski being the big one with the offensive line. Nate Solder is back at left tackle. Joe Tooney, the rookie out of North Carolina State, is in at left guard. So that moves Shaq Mason. Over to right guard. Marcus Cannon is back at right tackle and Ted David Andrews at center. So they continue to mix and match that offensive line with the injuries and, and getting it done. Garoppolo looking deep, throwing deep, has a man open and he overthrew him. Matthew Slater had his man beaten by a good four or five steps. So after the after the play action pass, they're having some success running the football with Blunt. Six carries for 17 yards with the play action pass. Everything's been underneath. Now watch the reaction. Garoppolo knows he misses it. He's upset, but you can see today. Uh, you can tell by the look on their faces they know they missed one. So back to the slant, and this is complete. Amendola pulled down shy of the 50-yard line, but enough for another New England first down. Jelani Jenkins is in position. He just doesn't get his head around fast enough. That football, the football nearly hits him as it comes through the crease. Jenkins, you'll see here, is dropping back over. 
He doesn't get his head turned around. Look at that ball oh. nearly hits him in the side of the helmet. First down. Man. Patriots at the New England 49. Go to the ground and blunt, and blunt across midfield to about the 48-yard line. Our first update of the day, J.B. and Coach Coward. A memorable reception. Yeah, that'd be for Xavier Grimble, his first reception of his career. A touchdown from Ben Roethlisberger from 20 yards out in Pittsburgh. Takes a 7 to nothing lead being played in some downpouring rain. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, and Jamie Erdahl. All right, guys, thank you. Second and seven. And Garoppolo going to throw again. All kinds of time, and now a chance to go deep, and that's incomplete. Fans want a flag, but a little incidental contact between Chris Hogan and Byron Maxwell, the cornerback. Well, that's one of the few times I've seen Jimmy Garoppolo miss his read. Julian Edelman is actually open to the right. He's doing a post stop where he's running up the field, just sits down in front of the safeties, and Garoppolo gets off of him too quickly getting to the backside. As I said, he hasn't missed very many, but that one he missed, uh, he missed Edelman open to the right side. Well, those numbers right there will tell you the kind of problems Miami is having so far here today. When, you, when your opponent has the ball three times as long as you do, it's an indicator. Now on third and seven over the middle. That's complete. That's another first down to Julian Edelman. It's, it's, like a, it's like a turkey shoot. Yeah, if you're going to bring pressure, they bring both guys off the slot. So you've got it. That means you've got to get your backside help over to, to, to help you. And just they're able to pick up. They can't get there fast enough. And Garoppolo is getting the ball out of his hands quickly and not allowing that uh, that pass rush to, to get to him. And converting on third downs and, and holding on to the football. Another first down. Under pressure, and he escapes. On the move, there's a penalty flag thrown in the backfield. There's a little magic act. Martellus Bennett with the catch. It's a holding call against New England. Well, Kiko Alonso is not going to be real happy with himself for not getting uh, Jimmy Garoppolo down on the ground. Holding. Offense, number 61. That penalty is accepted. Remains first down. Penalty is on Marcus Cannon. And Ryan Tannehill, all he can do is watch. He is 0 for 2 throwing the football today. No passing yards. And the defense for Miami has been working overtime. Well, and only one first down for Miami. That'd be the penalty on the first play of the game for them. The flip to DJ Foster out of the backfield. Inside the 35 to about the 32 yard line. Hey, with NFL Game Pass, replay every game this season, including the playoffs and Super Bowl. Start a free trial today at NFL.com slash Game Pass. DJ White on that last reception, rookie running back, talking to Josh McDaniels. He was telling me, you know, he wants to get as many weapons on the field as you possibly can. So not only spreading the ball around in the, the passing game to the receivers, but DJ Foster, an excellent receiver out of the backfield. What a nightmare of a first quarter for the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots had everything going their own way. We'll see what happens in the second quarter. 14 up in New England. We're coming back. This is the NFL on CBS. Well, it's been a happy Gillette Stadium so far. The crowd has been noisy from the get-go, and rightly so. Garoppolo, 12 out of 15 throwing for 177 yards and two touchdowns as we start the second quarter. Second and 13 for New England. Right up the middle, James White. 
and White inside the 20 for a first down. Byron Maxwell tripping him up. And everything in the playbook seems to be working for the Patriots. Everything that they're dialing up, you're right, Greg. It's just a matter of who's guessing right. Well, right now, New England and Josh McDaniels are guessing everything right. Whether it be the play action pass, whether it be draw in a long situation, whether it be play action trying to push it up the field or roll Garoppolo out, quick throws underneath. Right now, everything's clicking for New England. Look, Garrett Blunt may have even lost a yard or so. Here's some examples of Jimmy Garoppolo and how quick the ball is coming out. This is a play action pass, and it's still under two seconds. Just a quick three-step drop, eyes to the right, but get it out to the left on third and long. Once again, you're getting the ball out in, in a little over a second. You, you have no chance. And what that does is it builds frustration for the defensive front of the Dolphins because you're getting the ball out so fast. A lot of times those guys mentally, that's hard on them to deal with that the ball's coming out so quickly. On second and 12, Garoppolo steps up. Look at the time he has. Edelman coming across the field. Gets the ball and is out of bounds at about the 10. Garoppolo stepped up and there was no one in front of him. Well, and that's as you can see the frustration on the front four of the defensive pass rushers for Miami after that completion's made. It's just they're shaking their head right now. Under 13 and a half to play in the first half. New England piling up the yardage. Now Garoppolo on third and four. Here comes the blitz. He got rid of it to the end zone for the touchdown. Danny Amendola. So Miami puts all the guys in the press. You've got one on one down the middle. You know the middle of the field open. Jimmy Garoppolo is back there and realizes there's nobody in the middle of the field. You got nothing but one-on-ones across the board. Koa Misi was free and unblocked and still couldn't get there. Goskowski. It's good. 13-10 to play in the first half. Jimmy Garoppolo, I mean, that's just a young man who's just having too much fun. He's dialed in right now. Well, that young man, Jimmy Garoppolo, has engineered touchdown drives of 75, 75, and 76 yards. He's five yards shy of throwing for 200 for the game, and we have more than six minutes to play here in the first half. Yeah, I'm just looking. 195 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. There's Robert Kraft, the uh, founder, chairman, CEO of the Kraft Group. We had a chance to chat with him for about a half an hour yesterday morning. He's, he's always happy. I imagine that, that happiness meter is up a couple of notches right now. You would think coming into today, not only uh, not having Tom Brady and Jimmy Garoppolo coming in and just the nervousness of, you know, the home opener playing a division opponent, an opponent that played really well a week ago against the good Seattle team. But right now, everything New England is doing, they're doing right. This one will go into the end zone and will be brought out by Kenyon Drake. Slipped at the five, goes down at about the ten. So the Dolphins will start deep in their own territory. Saturday, the SEC on CBS brings you the best game from the best conference. It's a battle of undefeated as the Florida Gators go rocky top with the Tennessee Volunteers. And it all begins at 3 Eastern time with college football today right here on CBS Sports. Now I think, you know, for Miami, you can't just all of a sudden get into a mode where you're just going to throw the ball. It's still early enough in the game. You need to get a drive going. You need to get a first down. They, they, they need to get some completion. They have no completion. So it's just a matter. I know you're now you're pinned back inside your own 10 yard line. But right now this is about possessing the football, giving your defense a chance to regroup and getting a nice methodical drive down the field. Three tight ends on the field for Miami and Arian Foster in the backfield. And Foster gets the ball. 
and gets nowhere. Appeared to be a little communication problem. Tannehill didn't get the play call and was had it shouted out to him by the backup quarterback, Matt Moore. Well, it looks like they're having problems with the uh, yeah. with the headset with the headset to the to the quarterback. Uh, I don't want to bring conspiracy theories into this because there's a <laughs> lot of teams around the National Football League that have had problems with the headset to the quarterback uh, here in New England, but uh, it's not working here today. And teams usually have a backup plan if, if that goes down. Well, not much else is working for the Dolphins either. This is Kenyon Drake, and Drake trying to turn the corner, bumped out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. Jamie Collins knocked him out. And it'll be third and five. Well, and Tannehill this time runs to the sideline to actually get the play from Adam Gase, and that's then not, runs back. That's not the backup plan, That's not it? the backup plan, no. It's, it's, I, I know Ryan Tannehill's athletic, and he's in good state, but if you do that for the whole game, running back and forth, you're, uh, you're going to have some problems. That gets old? Yes. <laughs> third and five, and the crowd comes alive. Look at all the bodies up here at the line of scrimmage, trying to cause confusion with the protection schemes. Tannehill deep down the sideline, near side, it is incomplete. Intended for Jordan Cameron. And Duran Harmon came close to picking it off. Well, and Tannehill ends up on his back once again. You can see all the bodies here, as I pointed out, but they're only going to rush five, so you have a body for everybody. It should be picked up and blocked. It's one-on-ones across the board. Nearly intercepted down that left sideline. Matt Dar with his back to his end zone. Booms it out of here. Danny Amendola back to his 32. 40. Midfield. And into Miami territory. 11.33 to play in a first half that probably can't end soon enough for the Miami Dolphins right now. They need to regroup. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. Welcome to Verizon LTE Advanced, the next-gen network. State Farm. Talk to an agent today at 800-STATE-FAR. And by Genesis. Take a breath of fresh luxury. Well, the New England Patriots, three touchdowns on the board, the product of three long drives, 75, 75, 76 yards. This is their best starting position of the day at the Miami 48. Play fake. Coming inside is Chris Hogan. And he's hit and brought down, and we go down to Jamie. Greg, thanks. Nothing the Dolphins really could do on that last drive with any kind of communication issue that might have been occurring. And Ryan Tannehill didn't seem visibly frustrated. They took that helmet from him right away. Two different personnel people were working on them. He does have a helmet back at his feet now. Seems like it's working okay now. Thanks, Jamie. I don't think communication has been the biggest problem the Dolphins have had today so far. On second and six. This is James White, and White to about the 42, maybe the 43. Namakong Sue and Rashad Jones combining on the tackle. Well, and all third downs are big, but this one's huge for the Miami Dolphins to try and get a stop, and you almost have to get a stop where they are. You can't even give up a couple yards. You give up a couple yards, then that's, it. that's in that gray area where all of a sudden New England's going to go for it, being at the Miami 40-yard line, so important to get a stop here. Garoppolo under pressure got rid of it and down the sideline incomplete intended for James White really the first semblance of defensive pressure put on the quarterback today well it's it's, it's the pressure up the middle they bring they bring the linebacker pressure from Jenkins he has to get rid of that ball quickly and just not enough time to be accurate. So Jarvis Landry is back at his own 10-yard line. 
And we get a penalty marker. Ball start. Offense. Number 51. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Penalty is called on Markevious Mingo. Fourth-year linebacker out of LSU. That's a happy Bill Belichick right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, he's ecstatic. As well as, well, as well as they're playing, that's a, you know, he couldn't be much happier. Ryan Allen hangs this one up. It bounces and bounces back towards the Patriots before it's down inside the 15-yard line. Ryan Tannehill, new helmet, got to face the same old defense. You look at numbers like these, it doesn't leave much doubt as to who's uh, on top on the scoreboard, does it? Yeah, you know, <laughs> and Bill Belichick and the Patriots, they tell you we're not numbers people. We don't want to talk about numbers. We want to talk about wins and championships and those kinds of things. But it's it's hard to ignore those types of numbers. Tannehill on the quick slant has his man, and that is Jarvis Landry. And Landry continues to power his way forward to about the 35-yard line. And that was what they need to do. They need to get the ball out of his hands quickly. You can see Tannehill's numbers at home. He's 3-1 and one against these Patriots, but on the road against New England in this building, he's 0-4. for 4. And he's got an uphill battle to change that trend today. So on first down, Tannehill to throw again, and this time he's going to go deep down this side, reaching for the ball. It's incomplete, intended for Devontae Parker. Parker had it in his hands and couldn't hold. Well, and that ball floated just a little too much. You get it up that, in, that high in the air. Devin McCourty coming over from the middle of the field. Just working up the left sideline. He tries to look out to the right to freeze McCourty a little bit, but it just floats a little too much, allowing him to McCourty to come over and knock that loose. That's pretty well thrown ball. This is Jay Ajayi, second year running back, dragged down from behind by Barkevius Mingo. Back to New York, JV and coach. 49 is trying to back up a strong opening. Oh, this would be a big upset. Blaine Gabbert right here, 28 yards to Torrey Smith, and they take a 10 to 7 lead over Carolina in Carolina. Back to Greg Gumbel and Trent Green. All right, JV, coach, thank you much. Third and six now for Tannehill and the Dolphins. Snap, Tannehill wasn't prepared for it. Picks it up and goes down. That's the first year center, Anthony Steen, who's starting in place of the veteran, Mike Pouncey. Watch Tannehill not even looking, wasn't prepared for it. Still going through his cadence. Talk about crowd noise causing problems for quarterbacks and linemen. Wasn't even looking, and that's all on the center. If you look at uh, you look at Jermon Bushrod, the right guard, he's still looking back at Tannehill. He didn't give the tap to Steen to go ahead and make that snap. Amendola at the 24, eludes one tackle. And across the 30 to about the 31-yard line. Loose ball, but he is ruled down at the 31-yard line. And that's where New England will start. Coming up, a reminder, the Verizon Halftime Report with JB and the guys back in New York for all the latest NFL scores and highlights, as well as a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and NFL Network, all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Adam Gase is already preparing his halftime speech. Yeah, but there's there's two different trains of thought. You can come in and scream and yell and flip over Gatorade coolers and do all that stuff, but I don't think that's going to do any good. They've, they've got to figure out defensively, number one, how to get the Patriots off the field. I think it's going to be a mix of things. I think you have to continue pressuring. I think you can't give the big cushions like they've done. you got to come up and have your corners, your, your coverage tight like they're doing right now. Bang the receivers. Throw off some of that timing. Garoppolo throws far side of the field, incomplete. Byron Maxwell covering on the far side. 
and Malcolm Mitchell, the intended receiver. That's former Patriot Wes Welker. Talk about tough little receivers. <laughs> Yeah, he was great his time. Well, his time in the league, he was great, but especially his years here in New England. You'd think he'd have a picture with that mascot by now, wouldn't you? Three, 55 Mike. Which one he? Which I got? On second and 10, the flip out of the backfield to White, and White across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. And Kiko Alonso from his middle linebacker position with the stop. So it'll be third and five now. Well, Greg, I think they still have to continue to try and bang the receivers. I, th I think they can't, uh, they, they, they have to try and knock Garoppolo out of his rhythm. And, and so far today, he's, he's been very consistent with that rhythm, getting the ball out of his hands. And the few times that he has had time, he's just slid in the pocket and bought time and, and uh, been able to find things up the field. But you gotta continue to bang the receivers, I believe. Garoppolo looking for a first down. No, he gets hit and goes down. And we have a flag on the near side of the field. Cameron Wake got there, but let's check the penalty marker on this side. And this is going to go against Miami. Looks like they're going to say hand to face. Well, and there's some negatives that could come if you come up and you're, and you're trying to bang the receivers, throw off that timing as you're going to get some bumps past five yards. And in this case, it looks like they're going to get hands to the face. Illegal hands, hands to the face, defense, number 25. It's a five-yard penalty, an automatic first down. Sabian Howard is the second-round draft pick out of Baylor, the rookie cornerback, and he's the guilty party. That gives the Patriots a first down at their own 41, and that is the first penalty of the day on Miami. Down the bottom of the screen here, you're going to see the hand to the face. That left hand gets up in his face. A lot of times they won't call that when you get the hand off quickly. You can jam him real quick and get it off. If you leave it there is when the call comes, but obviously that call was made. The fact that it's third down have anything to do with it? It shouldn't have it shouldn't have an effect whether it's first, second, or third down. It's it's uh more so with the offensive linemen and defensive linemen, if you get the hand up there and you get it away quickly, they're not going to call it as as opposed to when you know, they're, they're looking from an injury standpoint. They don't, they don't want to see the head snap back. And that time the head snap back, and you can see it turn, the helmet turn. So I'm sure that's that's why why it was called. It shouldn't make a difference if it's third down or not. Second and nine. Are you going down? Yeah. Green 18. Green shot. Garoppolo with time. This side of the field it is incomplete. Edelman could not hold on. And Howard with the hit. That's unusual to see because Edelman has been holding on to everything. Well, and it's, it's, you see that little post move that he made at the top of the route, trying to get Howard to freeze that ball a little high, which allows Howard to come up and, and knock it loose. So it's third and nine, and again, Ready? the Dolphins in need alert. of a stop. Alert, alert, Mike and Will, 53 is Mike. Garoppolo, quick slant, wide open, and Mandola lost the football. It's on the ground. Who's got it? Looked like Alonzo got it. He jumped on the ball, but a lot of things happen at the bottom of that pile. It is Miami ball. So Amendola had it and lost it. And on the Patriots side of things, they may be checking to see if he had it long enough. Let's take a look right here. That ball clearly comes out. He had it for a good two, two and a half steps, it appears. And then had it dislodged from behind by Bobby McCain. 
You can see Martellus Bennett there at the bottom of the pile. You know that's frustrating because the ball's sitting right next to him, but because he has bodies on top of him, he can't reach out his arm and grab it. So that's a – unfortunately, I know that, Greg. <laughs> when you're sitting at the bottom of the pile and the ball is right there and you're trying to do everything you can to get a hold of it, but – You and I have talked about it. The bottom of the pile is oh, not a nice place to no, be. No, it's it? not. Things that are said and done down there, you're trying to do whatever you can to get that football. So there's no challenge forthcoming in his Miami ball. Oh at their own 42-yard line. Six minutes to play here in the first half. Tannehill over the middle to nobody. Devontae Parker was the nearest. Let's go down to Jamie. Greg, the aforementioned helmet swap for Ryan Tannehill was due to a bad battery. They replaced it no problem. Because of that, though, Patriots didn't have to turn off their helmets, which if there was some kind of communication issue, that would have been the equal case. Thanks, Jamie. Ajayi in the backfield. Arian Foster, we are told, dealing with a groin injury, and his, his return is questionable. Buddy. Tannehill throws to the near sideline, and that is complete to Jarvis Landry. And Landry bumped out of bounds but lost the ball. And the Patriots are on it. Chris Long with the recovery. with the reception out to the left flat. Makes the first defender miss. And as he's driving towards the first down, and before his foot goes out of bounds, the ball is stripped. Adam Gase told us yesterday, we got to protect the football because we're going up against a team that's really good in making you turn it over. Well, especially when you're down 21, you're trying to do whatever you can. You just got a big turnover. Your defense was able to get one. And now you give it right back to New England right near midfield. 5.49 to play. In the first half. And Garoppolo is going to put it up. Near side, incomplete, intended for DJ Foster. It'll be second and ten. Well, let's start by saying that last week's performance at Arizona was not a fluke on the part of Garoppolo. It definitely wasn't a fluke. And, and the way he's come out here today in this first half, already over 200 yards passing those three touchdowns. You can see the pressure that Miami has put on the last couple series. That's all of a sudden some inaccuracy has come in when you're able to hit. That time he was hit as he was trying to throw it, not as accurate. The time before the high pass to Edelman was because he had to slide over in the pocket and was late getting the throw out. That's Edelman. And the penalty marker is down. I think Edelman, a defenseless receiver. Personal foul. Defense number 24. Hit to the head of the receiver. That's a 15 yard penalty. And an automatic first down. That's the safety, Isa Abdul Kadus. Well, and I'm going to make. A couple of plays ago, this is Garoppolo in the pocket. And well, he got his right foot stepped yeah. on by his tackle. Marcus Cannon backing up, just stepped on the right foot. But back to the play on uh, on Edelman. They called hit on a defenseless player. And that moves the football to the 37. 47, 541 to play first half. And the Patriots threatening once again. And that's in and out of the hands of Bennett. Here's the play out to Edelman. They called helmet to helmet. I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. Edelman was sliding to the ground. So if you're a defensive player and you're trying to go up and make a tackle, you think you're going to make a good form tackle, and then the, the player slips and goes down. Next thing you know, it's helmet to helmet. So and he brings his helmet down to the level of yours. Yeah, I don't agree with that call. This is Blunt. The carrot Blunt. Short of the 35-yard line. So it will be third down. 
And the clock continues to move as we come up on five minutes to play in the first half, third and nine. Arian Foster, groin injury. We don't know if he will be back. Feeling that one. Kiko Alonso on the hit. He was able, watch as he slides up in the pocket and then he's able to, to escape and get out to his right. He avoids that one, then steps up another one, gets out to the outside. Alonso 47. He's going, he went down to a knee. You can see all, he, he's not. The pressure landed on his right shoulder. As the tackle, he had hit not only his body weight, but he had Alonzo's body weight. Ended up falling right on that right shoulder. And they're going to look at him. And meanwhile, the backup quarterback, number seven, Jacoby Brissett, the third round draft pick out of North Carolina State, starts to get loose. Once again, watch Alonzo as he comes up and hits. Watch all the pressure go on that right shoulder. A lot of pressure. Lots of things it could be. From collarbone to a sprained AC joint. Now what did what did Bill Belichick say? when we asked him yesterday who his emergency third quarterback would be. He said, I don't want to talk about that. I don't like to speculate about it. Well, I'll speculate. I, I would think it would be Julian Edelman just yeah. because of uh, his background in college and don't know how much throwing he would do, but you can see the amount of pain Jimmy Garoppolo is under. This is Jacoby Brissett. Drafted in the third round. And the main reason for Garoppolo staying down is to give Brissett time to warm up. Goes on that right elbow and ultimately onto that right shoulder. So they will look after him, and meanwhile, Jacoby Brissett's turn. He'll head down the tunnel and get some x rays, I'm sure. So here's Brissett. And he runs out of time on the play clock. And they, did they call timeout beforehand? They did not. They're going to back him up five. 91st player selected overall. Passed for more than 5,200 yards, 43 touchdowns. In his two seasons as a starter at NC State. Well, they take the penalty back and giving him the timeout. So, you know, we always talk about how an offense, and maybe an offensive line, has to adjust to a new guy like Jimmy Garoppolo. Now you get even newer with Jacoby Brissett. Well, I can tell you, I don't know how many snaps any of these guys have had with Brissett. Sure, but not only, I mean, I mean, you get the rhythm of the cadence, you get the, the, the timing of the cadence, you get the rhythm in and out of the huddle. Obviously, the flow of the terminology, being able to step in the huddle and, and call the plays in a timely manner, the adjustments you make at the line of scrimmage. 
Patriots do a lot of declaration in terms of who's the mic and where the line's turning to, to block. A lot of changes. He's going to give it to LeGarrette Blunt to start things off. And Blunt inside the 20. Forward progress will be marked at about the 17. And, Greg, it does help a little bit when you come in with a 21-point lead. Second down. What a turn of events. Blunt again. Maybe a yard. And the clock dips under three and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Being very conservative with the play call in here. A couple of run plays and already in field goal range. Not that you ever want anybody to be hurt, but right now, if you're the Dolphins and you're thinking, okay, if we can hold them to a field goal attempt here, get the ball back, try and get a score before halftime. There's his first pass, and it's through the hands of Edelman. And so the field goal unit will come on, led by Gostowski. Kostowski, three out of three on the season with a long of 53. This one won't be nearly that far. This looks like it'll be about a 34-yard attempt. From 34 yards. And Kostowski nails it. So with 2.48 to play in the first half, it's an uneasy New England crowd as all thoughts are with Jimmy Garoppolo in the locker room. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by FedEx, helping small businesses simplify e-commerce. And by Bud Light, beer with your team on it. Back in Foxborough, Massachusetts, 24 to nothing. Patriots in the lead. And there is the rookie, Jacoby Brissett. Cramming, I think, would be the term that he's doing now on the sideline. Not running out of the end zone. Jakeem Grant fumbled it. It'll come out to the 25, and we go down to Jamie. Greg, we're hearing from the Patriots quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo. Questionable return with a right shoulder injury. The team wouldn't tell me any kind of exams he was having done. It was just further evaluation in the locker room. For the Dolphins, backup linebacker Spencer Pacinger questionable with a neck injury. They did put an extra roll on his shoulder pads to help protect that if he does return. All right, Jamie, thank you. As I said, this is this is a change in this game. This and is the, this you can feel the mood change in the stadium. Yeah, it's a big change, and that's why if you're Miami, here at the end of the half, you want to go down and, if anything, get a field goal because you get the ball coming out first in the second half, and if you're the New England defense, you don't want to give them any life. This is Jay Ajayi, second year back out of Boise State. A reminder for you, the king of comedy is back on CBS. Kevin James returns in Kevin Can Wait premieres tomorrow after the Big Bang Theory only. CBS, Kevin James, huge football fan. And hilarious. Oh, yeah. and a wannabe quarterback. <laughs> hey, four down, four down. Lucky 91, four down. On second and three, Tannehill throws out here wide open as the tight end. Jordan Cameron, and Cameron out of bounds at the Miami 46. That'll stop the clock with 2.15 to play. Miami with all three of their timeouts remaining. New England has two. That's just Miami's third first down of the first half as they try and get something going here before halftime. Tannehill got rid of it. That's complete across midfield and Ajayi upended and forward at the 46. And with that, we reach the two minute warning. A minute 58 to play in the first half. Miami trying to get something started before they take a locker room breather.
back at Gillette Stadium, a minute 58 to play. Dolphins with second and short yardage at the New England 46. Tannehill under pressure, got rid of it, intercepted right in the middle of the field by Jamie Collins, and Collins returns it into Miami territory. Tannehill under pressure, and there was no one in the middle of the field except Jamie Collins, Chris Long putting the pressure on him. You're gonna see Jamie Collins right here in the middle of your screen, the pressure on Tannehill. He's trying to get the ball up the field. Collins just reading his eyes off the, doesn't bite on the play fake at all, standing in the middle of the field. His arm got hit as he let go. Under pressure, throwing off your back foot, getting hit. Frustrating day. Trying to flip the ball to, to Jarvis Landry coming from his left. He was he was locked into him on his eyes, and all Collins had to do was read his eyes and drift right back into the into the play and in the interception. Ryan Tannehill has had a lot of frustrating days here in New England in his brief career. This is LeGarrett Blunt straight ahead. Once again, a reminder, once we wind up the first half here, the Verizon Halftime Report with JB and the guys from New York with scores and highlights and a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network all coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. Well, there's clearly a different tempo here. You get a turnover and a ball to midfield with just under two minutes. And now that Brissett's in, handing the ball off. This is the second time they've handed it off. There's no up tempo. They huddled up. They're taking their time in and out of the huddle instead of utilizing those timeouts and, and trying to go down and get more points. So, my, so Miami takes the timeout. Stops the clock with 109 to play. What's that man thinking? James White alongside for set in the backfield. He's going to throw it. He throws to the far side, and that's off the fingertips of Edelman. And so the punting unit will come on. How many throws do you think Brissett has made to Edelman? Just even in practice. In his life? <laughs> in his life. <laughs> so because the two passes he's thrown were both to Edelman, and, and both Edelman wasn't able to hang on to. But you wonder just how many, how many times they've been able to, to connect up. The life of a backup quarterback. It right? is. That's just the reality of it. Allen kicks it. Landry with the fair catch inside the 15 yard line. So once again, horrible field position for the Miami Dolphins. So Patriots defensive end Chris Long founded the Water Boys Initiative that aims to provide clean, accessible drinking water to rural communities in East Africa. The foundation has raised over $750,000 to date. That's enough to fund 14 wells. And over 40,000 people are now receiving clean water from the Water Boy wells. That's nice. Yeah, it's great to hear that when guys are giving back and Chris Long, former teammate of mine. Hard to hard to believe, but yeah, former teammate of mine with the uh, with the St. Louis Rams. He then. didn't look that old. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? Now penalty markers. 12 for New England on the field. 12 men in formation on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty. First down. And Jonathan Freeney goes trotting off. <laughs> Right past his defensive coordinator who says not a word. He wasn't greeted warmly. He just wasn't greeted at all. So it's first and five. Lucky, 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 lucky. Stay Ringo, 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 Ringo. Stay with it. Tannehill to the outside. That's a giant out of bounds. You were talking with Ryan Tannehill about the whole thing about a new system and trying to get accustomed to, to a new head coach coming in, a new coordinator, and, and trying to figure out what they want. Well, yeah, that's a, uh, a another change for Ryan Tannehill as we take a look at, at Matt Patricia, the defensive coordinator for New England. Does a good job of mixing things up. He's done a good job trying to cause confusion for Ryan Tannehill today. Tannehill throwing is complete. Broken up by Malcolm Butler. Well, just to continue with that thought, 
you know, Ryan Tannehill has been in number of head coaches, number of offensive coordinators, and when you're continually trying to learn and get on the same page with everybody, it does it doesn't give you that same type of rhythm. And right now, Matt Patricia, as you can see, <laughs> giving Butler a, a pat on the helmet. You look at last week's game against Arizona, the way he was able to continue to mix things up. Look at all the guys. This is They like to do this. They like to have guys near the line of scrimmage, cause confusion with the pass protection, cause confusion for the quarterback. But then certain guys will drop out and get the underneath coverage. That pass is complete to Landry. And Landry looking for the sideline and forces his way out of bounds. Out of bounds under duress. You know, I talked to Matt Patricia this this week about just the confusion he caused. Sometimes they'll have all those guys at line of scrimmage. They'll rush two, they'll rush three, they'll rush four. They can drop into a two-man. They can drop into a man-to-man -man coverage. They can drop into a zone. And I said, how do you get all the guys on the same page? And he said, it's about the defenders learning the spots, not necessarily whether they're linebackers, safeties, corners, or what they are. It's our defensive guys have to know spots so I can plug in different people in different places. Tannehill 0 for 4 on third down so far today. That one complete to the far side to Jordan Cameron, and he is out of bounds for a first down. Just across the 35 to the 37-yard line. 34 seconds on the clock. And, Greg, do you know what happened to Tannehill again after this play? <laughs> he ended up on his back once again. You can see him working through the progressions. Eyes to the left. He's had a lot of that the first two weeks of the season. First down, great protection. Look at the time. And Tannehill going to tuck it and run and out of bounds at the 45. Kudos to the secondary for the New England Patriots because Tannehill had all day. Yeah, there was nowhere really for him to go. Most of the, what he was trying to do is trying, trying to find Jordan Cameron deep. But he was double teamed. The rest of the receivers are all underneath. So as Tannehill is trying to Get to the get to an underneath cut when you roll out to your left and all the receivers are back to your right The only guy was uh, was double teamed. You just have to run out of bounds the way he did Second and two Tannehill throwing and it's got complete inside the 40 to the 35 yard line to Deion Sims Fourth year tight end out of Michigan State and good delivery for Tannehill, who stops the clock with a timeout. 18 seconds to play. Well, with 18 seconds to play, you mentioned it earlier, it would mean a ton to this Miami team just to be able to put three points on the board before the half. Well, and then having the ball coming out first in, this, in the second half. So very slow first half for them in terms of uh, what they've been able to do production-wise offensively. They have one timeout remaining. Tannehill. Throwing, oh, right on the money to Jarvis Landry. And 11 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout, Miami uses its third and final timeout. That pitch and catch with Jarvis Landry, good for 25 yards. Biggest play from scrimmage so far today for Miami. Well, no timeouts here, Greg, so they either have to get it into the end zone or out of bounds. They can't be tackled inbound. Good protection. Tannehill on the move, throwing. End zone off the fingertips of Devontae Parker. And that's really about all Ryan Tannehill can do. You don't want to come away with no points at having a turnover there. Patriots dropped a bunch of guys into coverage trying to force the tight window. And as Miami gets ready to settle for a field goal attempt. 27 yards for Andrew Franks. And the first points of the day onto the board as time expires in the first half for the Miami Dolphins. It was all New England, and they were feeling really good about things today right up until the injury to Jimmy Garoppolo. 
Garoppolo being looked at in the locker room. We'll get word to you whenever we get it. On came Jacoby Brissett to replace him. Tannehill gets three points on the board, 24-3 in favor of the Patriots. We're back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. Massachusetts, where the Patriots lead the Dolphins by a score of 24 to 3. As we get set to start the second half, let's take a look at the first half highlight presented by DirecTV. Jimmy Garoppolo, three touchdown passes. This one to Danny Amendola, and things were going along swimmingly for the New England Patriots, but more about that later. I want to remind you that September is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month, and we here at CBS are partnering with the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital to raise awareness for this most important cause. Greg Gumbel, along with Trent Green, uh, in fact, uh, in conjunction with that cause, we're wearing the St. Jude's ties and pins, as we will do, as everyone at CBS will do for the rest of this month. Now, let's talk about not just Jimmy Garoppolo's injury, but the kind of effect that it might have on the, Miami, on the Miami Dolphins and on the New England Patriots. There, there is an impact on both teams, and, and I think from Miami's standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, it was completely different with Garoppolo in there and now with Brissett because with Garoppolo, you would have had to bang the receivers around just to cause some confusion in the passing game, but with Brissett now, you can play more of your normal defense and get in position to have success and set your offense up in better field position. Well, the Miami Dolphins hit that field goal and now they will get possession of the ball to start the second half and see if they can do something with it and continue what little momentum they picked up at the tail end of the first half. As you look at the first half numbers, time of possession, total yards, rushing, passing, all in favor of the New England Patriots. And here we go. That one will sail out of the end zone for the touchback, and we check in with Jamie. Greg, thank you. I caught up with Dolphins head coach Adam Gase going into the half. I asked him, how do you find better options offensively? He told me they are literally having breakdowns on every play, whether someone's not catching a ball. There are breakdowns on the blocking. He said he didn't sense frustration on the sideline, but disappointment. He told me at half they were going to press the restart button for the Patriots. Jimmy Garoppolo is out for the rest of the game with that shoulder injury. I'm still waiting to hear what kind of exams he had done from the team. All right, Jamie, thank you. And with Arian Foster still sidelined as we start the second half with a groin injury, Jay Ajayi starts the half. And the pass out here is complete to Jarvis Landry. Just keeps one tackler, breaks through another, and we've got a penalty marker down. This is going to go against the Dolphins. Holding. Replay. That penalty is on Kenny Stills. And the Dolphins, well, they had miscues of plenty in the first half. Right? They had a share of miscues. Here's the, here's the snap when Ryan Tannehill wasn't looking. The fumble after the nice reception by Landry trying to get extra yards, gets the ball ripped out, and then Ryan Tannehill not knowing where Jamie Collins is, trying to hit Landry from left to right, getting locked in and getting under pressure, floating the ball in the middle of the field. So now it's a first and 20. Tannehill over the middle. That's complete to Cameron. And Jordan Cameron across the 25 to about the 26 yard line. Got about 11 yards on the play. Well, that's what you need to do when you have first and 20. You just need to get a good chunk of that back. You've got 11 of the 20 and three receivers to the right just clearing things out. Jordan Cameron running a drag underneath. Getting them into a much more manageable second down here. Dolphins skip the huddle and go right to the line. It's 
incomplete across the 30 to about the 33 yard line to Jarvis Landry. Malcolm Butler with the stop. That'll make it third and about two. Well, it already looked just the last two plays looks like a different Ryan Tannehill, different offensive line in terms of the protection and time they're giving him. Much more crisp and sharp these last two plays. Make it third and one as the ball is spotted at the 34. Fake. The flip is complete. This is Devontae Parker. Parker down the sideline and out of bounds across midfield and into New England territory. And we check in with Jamie. Greg, thanks. Arian Foster running back for the Dolphins. He was questionable to return earlier with a groin injury. The Miami Dolphins have downgraded him to out of this game. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Well, Arian Foster, he has he has battled injuries the last three seasons. He only played in 25 games the last three years coming into this year and had the torn Achilles a year ago. This is a Jai and not much there. To about the 47 where Allen Branch made the tackle. Well it's going to be a big loss not having Arian Foster at 100 yards from scrimmage a week ago and they utilized him so much out of the backfield in the passing game as, as well as the running game but a now is taking over the the running back charges there with uh, Kenyon Drake will be uh, will be rotating in with him most of the time. Drake is the third round draft pick out of Alabama. Ajayi in his second season out of Boise State on second and nine. Tannehill to throw over the middle and he's got his man and once again is Devontae Parker. Tannehill did not have his services last week and we talked about when Parker came back he's got a pretty good arsenal of receivers. Yeah, Parker presents a different problem for defenses because of his speed a year ago averaged 19 yards per catch. In the first half, the Dolphins had six first downs and already here on this drive, they have three. Parker, the Dolphins first round draft pick a year ago. On first down, Ajayi looking for running room, lost the football and fallen on by the Patriots. Trey Flowers. Well, and Ajayi is saying he was down, but. That's not going to fly. The third Miami turnover of the day gives the Patriots the ball at their own 32 yard line and the young quarterback Jacoby Brissett goes back to work. With Garrett Blunt in the backfield. Play fake to him. Going wide open on the near side is Martellus Bennett. Bennett 45 midfield and off to the races. Inside the 35 and down at the 30 yard line. Kiko Alonso and Isa Abdul Kadus converge to make the stop, but not before. Bennett picks up 47 yards. And this is just a tight end throwback. Bennett is lined up to the right. Hard play fake to the right. Everybody's moving to the right. Nice stiff Little arm stiff by Martellus arm. Bennett. Yeah. But he sneaks across underneath the coverage and sneaks out that backside, gets the defense flowing hard. Blunt for a little bit. Jacoby Brissett, third round pick on in relief of the injured Jimmy Garoppolo. And we said earlier in the first half that he transferred in to NC State from Florida State. It was actually from Florida. And that was his first career completion. Boy, what a test for a youngster. Huh? Nice having the uh, a three touchdown cushion. This is James White. Penalty marker is down behind the play. And looks like it'll come back. Holding offense number 62. Ten yard penalty replay second down. The rookie Joe Tooney. But even though I said, Greg, it's it's nice having that three touchdown cushion. You still have to go in and perform, and you got and you got to consider that Josh McDaniels is going to 
drastically shrink as we look at the holding call right there. Joe Tooney and Jacoby Brissett, teammates at North Carolina State, both in their rookie season. Brissett and Tooney, both third round picks. Brissett fakes this way, goes that way, and this is better. With blocking. Shaking blockers and down to the 25 yard line. Just a double screen here. You're going to drop back, keep your eyes to the right. Pump fake over to the left. You even have a guard pull out in front to try and draw the underneath the defense. I like what Josh McDaniel's done from a play calling standpoint. You think about the three pass plays they've run here in the second half. One was a hard play fake. Tight end throwback. You really have no options, no reads. It's one guy or throw it away. The second throw was a screen, which got called back because of a holding. And then that time there was a double screen. Making things very simple for Brissett. Underneath, inside the 20. First down. And we get a penalty marker thrown on Bobby McCain. And frustration's beginning to show from the Miami Dolphins. After the play, personal foul. Defense number 28. That penalty's half the distance of the goal, automatic, first down. A little extra business at the end of the play. And not a smart piece of business either, not in the, in the position that they're in. Well, just the frustration carrying over. Mike 55. First and goal. Blunt, right side, touchdown. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett engineers the touchdown drive. Blunt with the last nine yards to the end zone. Well, you know, coming out of halftime, they're trying to put something together for Brissett that's going to make it a manageable thing. Not, don't think too much. Just let him go out and perform and play at a very high level on that drive. And the kick is good. 8.44 to play in the third. All that optimism the Miami Dolphins had coming out of the locker room, they're down 31-3. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Coors Light. Whatever your mountain, climb on. And by Domino's. Order online at dominoes.com. Five plays, 68 yards in under three minutes. And LeGarrette Blount with a nine yard touchdown jump to make it 31 to three. And this will go for the touchback and it gives us a chance to remind you week two continues later today on CBS. And for some of you on Fox then tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC. Tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN. We were joking with Bill Belichick yesterday about there were certain people who were saying he's gotten around the new NFL rule on touchbacks. And all Bill could do is shake his head to go, you know, you, you, if you think you can keep their guys from getting to the 25, you give it to them just outside the goal line. And well, I, clearly he has a different idea today. Well, it, it, he said a lot of it depends on the returner. And, and obviously they have a lot of respect for, yep. uh, you know, for Miami's return game and for, and for Jarvis Landry. Kenyon Drake in the backfield with Tannehill. That one complete to Devontae Parker. Well, and if you think of the way this second half started, Miami came out, they put together 
They got three first downs. They move across midfield. They had everything going. You think, okay, they got the late field goal before the half. They're going to get some momentum going, and then the fumble happens, and New England comes out after that turnover, marches it down, as you said, five plays, 68 yards, get it in the end zone. Oh, oh, now the Dolphins right. uh, appear to be going to a no huddle and trying to get a little bit yeah, more up-tempo. Get to a little bit of a rhythm here offensively. Tannehill going to lock this one up, and it is. Oh, what a catch. What a catch made by Parker. McCourty and Logan Ryan covering. You have to take some shots up the field when you have one-on-one -on -one and Devontae Parker after missing last week As I mentioned earlier averaged 19 yards a catch a year ago It's nice to have his, his big play presence on the field for the Dolphins that one good for 28 yards Tannehill With good time Only a three-man rush and this is Kenyon Drake and Drake out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. You mentioned rhythm. They've prevented Ryan Tannehill from really establishing any kind of rhythm throwing the football. They've done a nice job. Matt Patricia and the defense have done a nice job mixing things up, bringing pressure, causing confusion within the within the protection schemes, getting one-on-ones, getting guys isolated one-on-one -on -one to be able to get pressure on Tannehill. And then, of course, the coverage. They've, they've done a good job mixing up the coverage, whether it be press, going soft zone, going middle of the field close, uh, too deep. Uh, they continue to uh, not only put pressure, as I said, but, uh, you know, cause confusion with the routes as well. Tannehill saw nothing developing and just threw it into the dirt. And as you pointed out before, Trent, lots of Patriots up on the line of scrimmage. Well, I'm trying to set up a wide receiver screen that time. I'm not sure how that isn't called holding. Logan Ryan had a hold of the receiver. Just literally just grabbed his arm and held on to him. Sometimes you'll see that holding call from a defensive player trying to grab a running back as he's trying to get out on a screen. But third and long for the Dolphins. They need the 32-yard line for a first down. Tannehill dances out of trouble. Throws. Sideline. It is caught. And if he's in bounds, no, he is not in bounds. Jay Ajayi. The officials say now they're going to talk about it. Ajayi on the sideline. Direction. The ruling is that it is a catch on the sideline. First down, Miami. So they will give him possession and two feet inbounds. That angle, we didn't have a real clean look at his feet. So that's an 11 yard pickup and a first down. Oh, why, why, so loud? They get a snap off before any challenge flag can fall, and that pass is complete to Parker once again. So Parker has become a pretty active participant in the offense here. Well, and rightfully so. He, he's one of the guys that, that has that big play capability. That time, the short pass after. Having the long throw, long throw with the one-handed catch earlier in this drive. Remember, this is Parker's first action of the season. Didn't play last week at Seattle due to the hamstring. On second and four, Tannehill for the end zone. Got a man open. Touchdown. Kenny Stills, who dropped a short touchdown a week ago, holds on to this one. 24 yards. Stills is here. He's just going to do it out and up, up the sidelines. Tannehill has some time. They bring pressure. New England does. Able to pick it up. Ajayi steps up and makes the block, giving Stills the time to run that out and up. What were you asking Ryan Tannehill last night about if it's too soon to tease Kenny Stills? <laughs> he said it definitely was too soon. He got, he, I didn't even finish the question, and he's like, too soon, too soon. <laughs> Andrew Franks with the extra point, and it is good. So the first touchdown of the day for the Miami Dolphins is Tannehill to Stills. And they get that touchdown back. 31-10.
Welcome back, everyone. The NFL recognizes Hispanic Heritage Month by celebrating the history, culture, and tradition of Latinos. Visit NFL.com slash Hispanic Heritage to view unique stories, features, and content. And today, Alfredo Bejar is doing a Spanish-language version of the game via SAP. Seven plays, 75 yards. Kenny Still, the 24-yard touchdown catch. And Ryan Tannehill went six out of seven. That's exactly what they needed. You know, they got the ball moving pretty well that first drive, just got across midfield, had the turnover, that time able to finish the drive. Get on, uh, get seven on the board for the first time today. Matthew Slater, DJ Foster are deep from off New England. Line drive kick is going to go through the end zone for the touchback. When we come back to Foxborough, it'll be Jacoby Brissett at the helm for the New England Patriots. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by CenturyLink. Your link to what's next. Five forty-five to play in the third. The Patriots from their own twenty-five yard line and just barely a yard for Legarrette Blunt. You know Kenny Stills. We talked about him and his touchdown catch here a week ago in Seattle, wide open early in the second quarter. In the Dolphins' 12 to 10 loss, and as we mentioned, Trent wanted Ryan Tannehill to tease him a little bit. And Ryan said, "Way too soon." Brissett, wide open field, tucks it and runs, and slides down enough for the first down across the 35 to about the 36-yard line. Going back to the Kenny Stills, Ryan Tannehill thing, and he and I also had that conversation. I said, if that's one of your guys, you need to go back to him right away. You need to keep throwing at him and build that confidence back up because Kenny's made some plays for him, and that's exactly what Ryan did in the game last week against Seattle, and then today here with the big touchdown throw in the second half. Y20. New set of downs for New England. High snap and saved by Brissett. And Blunt powers his way to another first down. Had a little bit of disaster written all over that at the very beginning, and look what it turned into, another first down. Brissett able to stick his hand up and catch his one-handed and get the handoff all in one motion. Pretty good athleticism. Reflexes. 12-yard pickup. Line of scrimmage moves out now to the New England 48 as we come up on four minutes to play in the third. Under the gun, and Brissett goes down back at the 40-yard line. That is Jason Jones. Jones lined up over on the right, or the offensive right. Coming in between Cannon and Mason. Able to get that big sack on Brissett. So second and 18. Here you go, March 47. No, no. First sack of the day for the Miami Dolphins, who had three of them last week at Seattle. The give is to James White, who goes nowhere, and Damakong Sue making that stop. And we have not said his name much today. Well, definitely not when Garoppolo was in the game because the ball was coming out of his hands so quickly. Now, all of a sudden, a little bit more of a play-action type game, getting LeGarrette Blunt more involved with the running game. I would anticipate Sue would have a bigger second half just for those factors. March 98. Go, go, go. March 20. What is that? Third and 22. Little screen for James White. Shakes one tackler. Can't shake the rest of them as he gets it just across the 40 to the 41 yard line. Rashad Jones in on the stop for the Dolphins. Oh, one Dolphins. of the officials just went down.
And we do have, he is down at the 40 yard line. There was nobody around him, so you can see the medical people run out on the field. He was just running up to get the football and spot it and, and went down, so. Don't want to speculate on that, but that was, uh, that was pretty sudden. Well, he's going to come up. He is. Uh, that is Andre Wash, I believe. The umpire. And let's see if he's going to stay with us. He says, yeah, good for him. He's running up to grab the ball. It looks like his leg just caught in the turf or maybe slipped a little bit. So hopefully as it's it's as minor as the way he's acting. Got a little back pedal going there. Should be all right. Ooh, Michael Jackson. Jakeem Grant is back at his 15. Patriots think they have it, but looks like it's going to be an illegal touch. Now, a conference with around Craig Rolstad. During the kick, illegal block in the back. Return team number 31. That's a 10 yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down, Miami. That was right. That's illegally touching someone. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 204 to play in the third, and not much going right for the Miami Dolphins here this afternoon. Well, tonight, what does a submarine with 200 nuclear warheads on it look like? Find out on a new story on 60 Minutes, plus an interview with the Libertarian candidates for president. Tonight, only CBS. In sweats, Arian Foster, done for the afternoon after suffering a groin injury in the first half after just three carries and nine yards. So the Dolphins now from their own 12. And this is Drake. And the rookie out of Alabama. Out across the 15 to the 17 yard line. And you'll continue to see the Dolphins with an up-tempo no huddle. There's Stephen Ross, chairman of the board with the Miami Dolphins. You know, he was very involved and supportive of the players that he had who took a knee in the national anthem last week and this week. Tannehill completes it to the 20 yard line to Devontae Parker. Just to tell you, Stephen Ross created an organization called Rise a year ago. It's a nonprofit organization that's dedicated to promoting and understanding and respecting uh, equality and uh, very much supporting his players. And they appreciate him for that. Third and one. Tannehill going to throw for it. Sideline, wide open. Pulled in. Penalty marker is thrown. Nice grab by Jarvis Landry. Let's check the flag. That is a sweet little catch by Jarvis Landry.
They're going to get him with a. Uh, they're going to wave it off. It's they're either going to call it. There's a, no foul on the play as the contact occurred at the line of scrimmage. Completion, first down. So here is Landry. Here's the contact. They're going to see right here with the with the wheel route coming on the outside. They wave it off. They throw it because it appeared to be a pick, but because it, oh. But there's that grab. So Landry pulls it in for 33 yards, and it's a first down at the New England 46. Tannehill. And once again, it's Landry. And Landry with a first down and fighting for more yardage down towards the 30 yard line. Dolphins got a little juice going here now in the third quarter, trying to get some. Uh, Try to get some momentum, get this thing going their way. They go down and get a touchdown here and get it to within two scores. Missed tackle by Collins and Landry fighting for extra yardage up that left sideline. This will be, or could be, the last play of the third quarter. And they won't get the snap off in time, it would appear. That's it. 31-10 New England. And we've played three here in Foxborough. We're coming back after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Along with our producer, Jim Rickoff, our director, Suzanne Smith, Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl, back at Gillette Stadium for the fourth quarter. 31-10 New England, Miami on the move. At the New England 32 yard line, Ryan Tannehill, his last two drives, eight out of nine, throwing the ball for 126 yards. Stay with it! Tannehill going deep. Penalty marker is thrown. Devontae Parker and Logan Ryan kind of like blocked his path. Pass interference. Yeah. Defense number 26. The ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. So that'll take them to about the 11. Logan Ryan's going to be moving back and in, into coverage down here at the bottom of the screen. Just a little stutter and go. Watch how he wheels to the outside and gets in front of Parker. You know, just before that snap, Ryan Tannehill kind of hand delivering a play. To we that had, side of the line. We had the rookie Kenyon Drake lined up in the slot and uh, had to explain to him what to do. You saw Adam Gates quite animated on the sideline. Tannehill looking, throwing, end zone. Did he catch it? He caught it. Jordan Cameron, touchdown. And we have a Patriot flat on his back. Two Talk. Patriots down. One of them is Patrick Chung, but he's up and limping. The other is Jamie Collins. And well, it's the two defenders that Jordan Cameron caught the ball from. Cameron right here, he's going to work up the crease. Tannehill's just going to fire it into a tight window. Oh, and Jamie Collins' helmet made contact with teammate Patrick Chung. Right Watch the helmet. There. It hits right on Hung, oh, on Chung's hip there. Pretty good strike thrown by by Tannehill. Yeah, I said he squeezed it into a tight window there. I think it was more like a keyhole. <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot of room in there to get that football. Andrew Franks for the extra point. And it is good. And with 1451 to play in regulation, 31 17, New England.
17, we are back in Foxborough. David Ortiz preparing for his retirement from Major League Baseball. He is being honored all across the country as he visits his last stadium. And he was honored here today with the Patriots as the honorary captain. He went out for the coin toss. He, you know, chatted up fans and Robert Kraft. Earlier this summer for David Ortiz's foundation, uh, the David Ortiz Children's Fund Gala. Robert Kraft donated $100,000. So it's only fitting that David Ortiz come out here today. Don't worry, though, Red Sox do have a nighttime game. Yeah, Jamie, and now David Ortiz goes back to his nighttime job of personally destroying the New York Yankees. 1451 to play in regulation. This one they're going to kick short of the end zone. And this is Matthew Slater. Oh! Big collision before he reaches the 20 yard line. So the Dolphins win that gamble. He doesn't reach the 25. A reminder get the CBS Sports app for inside access to your favorite team from the front office to the front row. You'll get instant coverage of every moment from every angle. Download the CBS Sports app today. It is a chess game on the kickoffs, isn't it, Trent? It is. A lot of teams around the league are doing that with the new rule, moving it out to the 25. Many teams are. Kicking it short of the goal line and, and trying to rally and tackle as as the Dolphins did this time down inside the 20. And as Bill Belichick explained to us, it just depends on what you think of their return team. If you think they're too good, then you kick it through the end zone and have them start the 25. This is what Garrett Blunt Blunt with a hurdle and extra yardage. Out to the 45 yard line. Byron Maxwell had a real good view because Blunt jumped him down the sideline. The size of Blunt to get up and that's incredibly athletic. A man that size in the open field. Uh, and that wasn't a little hurdle. That was that was an extra high hurdle. LeGarrett Blunt at six foot 250. Over back. Right 20. Right to the Blunt to about the 48. Pick up of three. It'll be second and seven. And Rashad Jones in on yet another tackle. And Blunt now with 20 carries already for 84 yards. His play picked up after Garoppolo went out with his injury. As Kobe Brissett, the rookie quarterback, has relied on Blunt significantly more than, uh, than Garoppolo did. He's going to throw it here, throw it outside, and that's complete to Chris Hogan. And Hogan has a first down. All the way to the Miami 41. If you're joining us late, Jimmy Garoppolo went down with an apparent shoulder injury in the first half. And on came Jacoby Brissett, the rookie quarterback drafted by the Patriots in the third round out of North Carolina State. Here you go, Mike's 47. One. Inside 35, just barely, and they'll put it at the 35. Well, we were complimentary of this offensive line with the, the time they were giving Jimmy Garoppolo. Some of that had to do with the decision making he was doing and getting rid of the ball quickly. But the offensive line now is in a position where. The defense knows they're going to run the football. They're going to be short passing game. They're going to do play action passes. They're going to keep everything very simple. Josh McDaniels calling the plays, and that offensive line is performing. So advantage to who, offensive line or D-line? I would say defensive line, but right now on this drive, the offensive line is winning. Brissett dodges the blitz, gets outside, slides down for a first down, and we have a late penalty flag in the backfield. Holding offense number 62. It's a 10 yard penalty replay. Second down. Well, that's Brissett's old college teammate, Joe Tooney from NC State. Well, it's, it, it never fails when you go to compliment. You can see the hold right there. <laughs> you, give a, you give him a compliment, next thing you know, it's a, a holding penalty. So. It's the jinx of the announcer, I guess, right? Is that a real thing? You sure you didn't do is that? that a, is, that, is that a real you thing? You sure you didn't do that when you were playing? Y20! Watch your side! On second and 15. Deep drop, and then he goes down. Lost the football. It is loose. Who's got it? Still loose. 
Looks like it was covered by the Patriots back at the 40-yard line. James White diving on the ball. Michael Thomas shook it free on the blitz. It starts to come out as soon as the hit happens. Oh, they had a hold of it. The Dolphins did, and you can see. You can see White getting over to get a hold of it. So here they are at their own 41. They'll hand it off to James White, and White will get it across the 45 to the 46-yard line, and here comes the punting unit. So 11 minutes to play in the fourth, and Rashad Jones is down, but now he's back up. 11 minutes to play here in regulation, and the Dolphins down two touchdowns, about to get the ball back. And you think if it's unheard of for a comeback, it happened just a week ago. Kansas City down 21 late in the third quarter to San Diego, able to come back and win that game in overtime. So. The momentum has drastically swung in the favor of the Dolphins at this point in time. Allen kicks it to Keen Grant, lets it bounce, and takes a Dolphin bounce. And it's going to come to rest somewhere around the 28-yard line. So Ryan Tannehill back on offense, as are the Dolphins when we come back to Foxborough. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Progressive. Handing off big savings to you. Walmart. Save money, live better. And by the Lincoln Motor Company and the exhilarating new Lincoln MKZ. Well, the Patriots get a couple of their walking wounded back. Jamie Collins and Patrick Chung both injured on that last Miami touchdown are back on the field. Tannehill, who has been red hot in the second half. From the 25. On the move, throws over the middle. That's complete across the 30 to the 33-yard line is the tight end, Jordan Cameron who's putting together a pretty nice day. Well, I think the Dolphins will just continue to what they do, what they've done here in the second half. Keep that up-tempo, no huddle. It's not a it's not a two-minute type of tempo. It's more of an up-tempo play calling at the line of scrimmage. Put pressure on the defense. This is Ajayi. And no place to go for Ajayi. They're going to mark him forward progress at about the 33 and a half of the 34 yard line. Third and two. complete to Landry and Landry has the first down to about the 38 yard line again you can't say enough about the confidence that Ryan Tannehill has shown especially here in the second half well he's shown much more accuracy I think I think he's a little bit more crisp with the football his decision making is quicker he's being definitive with his throws very similar to what we were talking about with Jimmy Garoppolo but now all of a sudden Ryan Tannehill here in the second half has shown that confidence as well Tannehill all kinds of time and picks out his man in the middle of the field that's Devontae Parker across midfield to the New England 48 you want to know when you can tell a quarterback is throwing with some confidence watch the way he steps into this and zips it into the zone he finds a window and zips and there's three defenders there's another receiver but you step into the throw you're, you're very assertive with that type of throw and that type of decision another first down and Tannehill to throw it again over the middle has his man once again Jarvis Landry and another Miami first down inside the 35 well, sometimes as a quarterback, when you're trying to come back from as many points down as the Dolphins are trying to come back, 
you have nothing to lose. So go ahead and fire it in there. And, that, and that's the way he's thrown this entire second half. The Dolphins only three first downs in the first half and, and now sitting here with 16 already in the second half. He's throwing rocket shots over the middle too. Well, six first downs in the first half, 13 here in the second half. Coming up on eight minutes to play in regulation. Out of the backfield, the giant. The giant turns it up inside the 30. And met hard at about the 27 yard line. I guess Jamie Collins' neck feels okay <laughs> after that hit, the hit he delivered. Once again, right to the line of scrimmage, no huddle. Seven and a half to play, second and four. Complete inside the 20 to the 15 to the 12 is Kenny Stills. And yet another Miami first down. When Miami's gotten into a pretty good rhythm here, throwing into or throwing at the coverage of Justin Coleman. 16 yard pickup. Tannehill looks left, goes back the other way, looking, looking, and he's going to run it to the 10, sliding down close to the five-yard line. They're going to mark him down at about the seven. Trent, what is it about the no huddle that is obviously giving New England's defense a problem? You know, a lot of it from an offensive standpoint, from a quarterback standpoint, if I was struggling offensively or if the team was struggling offensively, I would like going to the no huddle just to change the tempo and the rhythm up. And, that, and that's what the Dolphins have done here in the second half. And you can tell they just feel better with this tempo. And, so, and sometimes it's not like that's something you want to go to the rest of the season. But when you're trying to change things up, that was a good adjustment that they've made. Some of it was necessary because of how far behind they were. Looks like Bill Belichick walked all the way down to about the 10-yard line to call a timeout here and said, hey, we got to stop this for a while. Ryan Tannehill on this drive, six out of six for 60 yards. He is throwing with much more confidence, Greg. It's a, it's a different quarterback than what we saw in the first half. And obviously some of that has to do with what New England was doing defensively, but the adjustments that Adam Gase made it at, at halftime, they came out with here in the second half. You can just see not only the play calling from Adam Gase, but the decision making and, and just the confidence that Ryan Tannehill is showing. Tannehill looks like he's having as much fun now as Jimmy Garoppolo was having in the first quarter. Second and four. This is Drake, right side, inside the five, looking for the end zone. Touchdown. Kenyon Drake, the rookie out of Alabama. Perfectly timed play call by the Dolphins. Look at the pressure that New England is bringing from the left side. They're bringing linebackers and secondary. They're bringing Patrick Chung came on that left side. So you catch him bringing pressure to one side and dropping to the other side, and then that's the side you attack. That's the result you're going to get. So his first NFL touchdown. Andrew Franks. for the extra point. And with 6.06 to play in regulation, Miami is within a touchdown. 31-24, Jacoby Brissett. What kind of response will he have when we come back?
Well, you got to tip your hat to Ryan Tannehill here in the second half. 20 out of 21 for 256 yards, two touchdowns, and that one incompletion was the screen pass that he saw developing that he just threw it into the dirt. That's, I don't think you can't do it any better than that. And uh, he's got to keep it going. This game, uh, game is definitely not over. So they'll bring it out to the 25 yard line and that young man will be front and center pressure is a little different now. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Subway restaurants. And by AT&T mobilizing your world. Welcome back to Foxborough, which was as noisy as could be in the first half. Not so much now as the Dolphins have mounted a comeback. We're set at the controls from the 25-yard line. LeGarrette Blunt, left side. Across the 30 to the 31. This game turned in the first half when quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo fell hard on that shoulder and left the game injured. We have not heard further about that injury, but on came Jacoby Brissett, the rookie quarterback out of North Carolina State. And since then, it has been all Miami. Before the injury, New England led 24-0. Since then, the Dolphins have outscored the Pats 24-7. Blunt, left side with blockers, first down. Across the 35 to about the 37, maybe the 38. Kiko Alonso with the stop. A reminder for you, in just two days, NCIS's Michael Weatherly returns to CBS in the new legal drama Bull premieres Tuesday after NCIS only CBS. And this isn't all on Jacoby Brissett now. You have to understand, he's 5 of 7 for 76 yards since he's been in there. But the playbook is very limited. The number of snaps that he's had, how much of this offense does he truly understand? It's been a very conservative approach up to this point. Brissett under pressure and had to throw it away. Mario Williams, and we haven't even whispered his name all afternoon, applying some pressure. There's the before and after the injury. Jacoby Brissett, five out of seven for 76 yards. And clearly, the New England Patriots have dialed the offense back. Well, you, you have to. It's just it's just how many reps has, has Jacoby actually gotten? You know, Tom Brady was around during the preseason. He took a lot of reps during the preseason. Jimmy Garoppolo has been taking everything since then. It's uh, very limited in terms of, of how much of the playbook he knows. On second and 10, this is Blunt, left side again. Big yardage again, close to a first down. He may have the first down. Let's see where they mark him out. He actually lost the football as he was nearing the sidelines. Lucky that it bounced out of bounds as opposed to Maxwell with punching it out there. A big Nate Solder out in front. On third and one. This is going to be close. Nope, not that close. They signal the first down. A much needed first down for the New England Patriots. Well, right now, time is, is what you have. That's the, that's the big factor for New England to keep that play clock moving, keep that game clock moving. Garrett Blunt, over 100 yards rushing today. Looking to add to it here. And he might get a yard. Alonzo once again on a tackle as we come up on 340 to play. Ryan Tannehill just aching for another shot at offense. Well, that's impressive by Alonzo coming up, giving up about 15 pounds there against Blunt one-on-one -on -one in that hole and able to stop it for a minimal gain. Well, then he's a high hurdler also. We saw that earlier in this game. There's a quick pass, and that's complete. Inside the 40 to the 35, Martellus Bennett.
Pressure drive and delivering some pressure throws. Not the best throw in the world, but you put it on his hip where he can bring it in. Martellus Bennett with a tough catch and a first down. And the clock continues to move. Miami with all three of its timeouts remaining. Watch it. March 53, March 47. March 20. What is that? Blunt. Finding room up the middle, inside the 30. To about the 26. And the Patriots executing perfectly down the stretch here and doing what they have to do to maintain possession. Miami uses a timeout here to stop the clock with 2.17 to play. Just a reminder for you, Thursday, your weekend begins right here. These New England Patriots go right back to work in a few days, hosting the Houston Texans Thursday night football on CBS and NFL Network. And Greg, we talked about at the beginning of this whole thing about New England and, and how they're able to shuffle players in and out of the system and the number of changes they continually have to make to to obviously have the type of success they've had over a long extended period of time. Once again on this drive, the offensive line dominate. They've got two rookies at both guards, Joe Tooney and Ted Karras. Have been pushing the pop for the Patriots. On the sneak. Brissett gets the first down with a lot of help. And now Patriots fans feeling a little better about the situation to the point where some of them are going to excuse themselves for the afternoon. 31, 24, two minutes to play at Foxborough. Welcome to those of you just joining us here in Foxborough. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl, the New England Patriots with a one touchdown lead on Miami. It wasn't always that way. It was a 24-0 lead in the first half for the Patriots before Jimmy Garoppolo suffered a game-ending injury. As LeGarrette Blunt is brought down, and New England will use another timeout to stop the clock. It is their second. So Garoppolo led the Patriots to a 24-0 lead, suffered the injury, and on came the rookie quarterback out of North Carolina State, Jacoby Brissett, as you look at the numbers on the day. New England led 31 to 3 into the second half before the Dolphins turned things around. Well, New England leaned heavily at that point in time on LeGarrette Blunt. Now with 27 carries, 117 yards. Brissett has done a nice job of managing things. They haven't asked a lot out of him. He's 6 of 9 for 92 yards. Really, at this point in time, they're going to run the ball again here, force Miami to use that last timeout. They're already in field goal range, so now they'll probably run it again on third down since they're well within Goskowski's field goal range. And the Dolphins are out of timeouts now in New England with two remaining and a minute 52 on the clock. Coming up next, most of you will see Andrew Luck and the high-powered Colts offense visiting Von Miller and the Super Bowl champion Denver Broncos. Or the Atlanta Falcons take on the Oakland Raiders. The Jacksonville Jaguars visit San Diego. That's all coming up next here on CBS. So Garoppolo left. The Patriots had a 24-0 lead, and Miami has since outscored New England 24-7. Why 20? What is that? Blunt. Boy, he's going to sleep well tonight, isn't he? His, his day drastically changed after the injury. When you think about the number of carries he had before and after the injury, it's, it's uh, and he's he's been up to it. So 29, 29 carries now. Yeah, Goskowski comes on to the field for the field goal that would provide a 10 point lead for the Patriots. This will be about a 39 yarder. And he missed it. And he missed it. Pushed it to the right. We've seen a lot of crazy stuff here today, Greg. This is 
the very reliable Steven Gostowski. Missed what for him you'd have to consider a chip shot. Well, these Miami Dolphins came roaring back and, and, and had a few terrific plays to boot. Nice one handed catch by Devontae Parker and then three touchdowns we're going to see here. The last one coming from the rookie Kenyon Drake on the carry. So here's Miami, a minute four on the clock, no timeouts remaining. And 69 yards away from a tying score. Tannehill at quarterback has had a terrific second half throwing the football. With time, throwing, complete, over the middle. Devontae Parker out close to midfield. He's going to be marked down at the 49. See if they stick with the, the, the play calling or if they go up and spike the ball. It looks like they're calling a play here, using up some valuable time. 45 seconds remaining. Tannehill had it tipped at the line and it falls incomplete. That'll stop the clock with 38 to play. The pressure that New England's bringing leaves a lot of man on man out there. Looks like Chris Long jumping up, getting a hand on it, tipping it in the air. Chris Long's been a busy guy today. Second and ten. Tannehill with time. Now going to pull it down and run. 45, 40. Just keeps his head up and inside the 35-yard line. They need to spike it here to try and save some time. That time New England only rushed three, dropped eight into coverage. Tannehill recognized it, take off and run. And they spike the ball with 19 seconds to play. Tannehill took off for 17 yards and didn't slide at the end of it, did he? No, he put his shoulder down trying to get it. They've corrected the clock, 19 seconds to play. Remember, Miami is out of timeouts. I think you still try and pick up another 10, 15, 20 yards here. Run up and spike it if it stays in bounds. Give you some real opportunity. Sideline pass, and that's out of bounds. Jarvis Landry with the catch. 15 on the clock. Just remember, Ryan Tannehill has some terrific receivers in Jarvis Landry, Devontae Parker, and Kenny Stills. Well, I still think you're too far from the end zone at this point in time. With New England being in prevent, it'd be more of a jump ball if you try getting in the end zone. I'd still like to get a chunk of yardage here, get a spike or get out of bounds so you have more of a realistic chance closer in. Tannehill throwing and side line and complete. Kenny Stills, the intended receiver. Broken up by Devin McCourty. McCourty almost came up with the interception. Yeah, Kenny still didn't get a hand on that. It would have been intercepted. In this situation, you just saw it on the last down. New England likes to go to a cover 22 man. What that means is you have a two deep safety. The underneath coverage is in man to man, so that allows them to be in a trail technique. So you have to throw that really pinpoint accuracy with your throws. Fourth and five. Tannehill going for it all to the end zone. Parker, and it is intercepted. Duran Harmon picked it off. Devontae Parker with a little out and up.
He's able to beat Butler with that move. But like I said, when you're in that, that, that two-man look with a trail technique and a guy over the top, it's Harmon that's in the back to be able to come up and get it. Rough way for things to end here in the second half for Ryan Tannehill. And it's strange to say with the huge advantage that New England had in the first half, I think they're feeling like they survived. Well, you would have to think that, especially when you look at Greg, you pointed out the change before Garoppolo's injury and after Garoppolo's injury. They have to feel fortunate getting out of here with the victory. The Patriots go to 2-0. and And maybe you're looking at the starting quarterback on Thursday night. Yeah, maybe for the next couple weeks before Tom Brady is allowed to get back. We don't have an update on Garoppolo, but it didn't look good the way he went down on that right shoulder. Meanwhile, Ryan Tannehill. This is another crushing defeat for the Miami Dolphins because they found themselves a little bit too late in the game. Well, it really changed when the Garoppolo injury happened. The offense in the second half, Adam Gase made some good adjustments. They went to the no huddle, not necessarily a hurry up, but a nice tempo offense, got into a good rhythm. And you think of the numbers that Ryan Tannehill was able to put up, ended on that interception, but finished the day 32 of 45 for 397. Nearly brought him back to send this thing into overtime. Bottom line though, the Miami Dolphins start the season 0-2 in the AFC East. And the New England Patriots improve to 2 and 0. Once again, our final score: New England 31, the Miami Dolphins 24. Up next, it's Game Two of our doubleheader. Most of you will see Indianapolis at Denver for Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl, and the rest of our CBS Sports crew here in Foxborough. I'm Greg Gumbel. So long. You've been watching the NFL on CBS. Let's go to JB in New York.